Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Wise Decision Maker Show, where we help you make the wisest and most profitable decisions. My name is Dr. Gleb Sapurski. I'm the CEO of Disaster Avoidance Experts, the future of work consultancy that sponsors the Wise Decision Maker Show. And today I'm joined by Graham Glass, who is the CEO and founder of Cypher Learning. Graham, can you tell us a little bit about what Cypher Learning does? Yeah, and once again, thanks a lot for having me on the show, Gleb. Sure. So Cypher Learning, we provide a very popular uh, cloud-hosted learning platform, which is used by businesses, schools, and universities around the world. So for example, customers like McDonald's might use our system for teaching franchises around the world, or universities might teach it for teaching marketing. So yeah. um, that's what we do. Excellent. And you are getting into the AI and learning space. Tell me about what you've been finding as you're getting into the space. Yeah, so first of all, I'm a huge fan of AI. I have been since I was a kid. And yeah. one of the things that we wanted to do was to show how AI can be used to truly revolutionize the way that people yeah. learn, the way that instructors teach. So the first thing we focused on is content creation. It's a big pain point for professors, for L&D department. Yeah. And we wanted to make it super easy for them to create a modern, sophisticated, engaging course. So we are the first company in the world to demonstrate a way to create an amazing course in 10 minutes. And hmm. when you see this kind of stuff in action, it's pretty jaw-dropping. Excellent. What does it involve? Tell me a little bit more. Well, so, so behind the scenes, there's actually more than one AI involved. There's three different AIs that we're currently okay. harnessing. But from the user's perspective, they don't have to know anything about any of these AI technologies. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you an example of what they would do. They would say, yeah. build me a course. What do you want the course to be on? I want it to, I want it to be about digital marketing. What mm -hmm. tone of voice would you like for this course? What level yeah. would you like the course? Do you want it to be themed with a particular thing? Okay. And then we go into, okay, how many pages of content do you want to create? Do you want to have quizzes? Mm -hmm. Do you want to have written assignments? So you basically check a whole bunch of boxes and tell it what kind of course mm -hmm. it is. And when you're done, you say, go. And in about 10 minutes time, it creates you what tip, what used to be maybe 400 to 500 man hours of work. And Whoa. it can pull that down into just 10 minutes. Mm. That's wonderful. I mean, I'm someone who has created a number of online courses, including both my own and for clients. So I help clients figure out the future of work, hybrid work, and so on. And so I know how much time it used to take me. And it certainly takes a long time to create a high quality course. And yeah. so you're saying you can create one in 10 minutes flat. That's really great. How would you tell me a little bit more about how you develop the AIs? Because you probably did some training, some fine tuning. What did you do to develop those AIs? Yeah. So, and one of the things I will just un underscore for your viewers is that we don't, we don't position what we call our co-pilot for our platform as doing 100% mm -hmm. of the work. Because any like, like yourself, when you do your own course, you're going to have your own tone of voice, your own personal anecdotes, things yeah. that you want to incorporate, but certainly 80% of the course in 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, now, behind the scenes, as I mentioned, we're using three different AIs. And as time has gone by, we think we're going to be adding one or two new AIs in the next couple mm -hmm. of months. So it's not a single AI. And what our system does is it breaks down all the tasks involved to create an entire course into about mm -hmm. 150 small conversations. Mm -hmm. So for example, the very first prompt would say, yeah. building a particular course with this kind of background and this particular context and this particular theme, what are the 20 competencies that this course is going to teach? Mm. So before we even create the content, we create the, the formative backbone, if you like, of the course. Mm -hmm. And and it might take an AI two minutes to figure that part out. So there are some right. tasks that are very, I guess, thought intensive. I, I was going to anthropomorphize. The AI I think is quite a lot. Okay, here are the 20 things. Once we've actually generated that, then we'll say the next prompt is create me the course outline, which is going to cover these 20 things mm -hmm. with such, such a set of modules. But once it's created the backbone, then it goes crazy and it will launch about 130 different API calls simultaneously <laughs> to build out the actual content of the course. So behind the scenes, even though it's using these AIs, it's doing a tremendous amount of very, very detailed prompting <laughs> to come to the final course. 
Yeah, I can imagine that having worked quite a bit with AI, I wrote a book called ChatGPT for Thought Leaders and Content Creators. I can imagine that it would be really deeply thought out behind the scenes yeah. for you to create 80, even 80% of the course that fast. But so you would, so let's go back to the experience of the user, the teacher, yeah. the educator. So she or he would experience the course creation. They get that, a lot of content. What would they do next? So, so typically when you create a course, as you know, the course is built out of say modules. Modules mm -hmm. have content. And in the world of especially K through 20, there's gonna be various kinds of assessment. Yep. And we're a big believer in something called competency-based learning. So what mm -hmm. that means is if you're teaching a course, that course will be aligned with say 20 to 25 specific things that it's gonna teach you. So yep. ideally we would like to also measure your level of understanding in all of those 20 different competencies. <laughs> so one of the things that we do is we create these question banks automatically. We create written assignments automatically. We create study guides automatically. But yeah. the nice thing for the educator is it does that huge amount of work really fast. So once you've created the course, the next step would be to review that course and see which okay. particular areas would you like to elaborate on. Um, everything mm -hmm. that the co-pilot creates is editable. So you okay. might change certain things around, add your own particular anecdotes, maybe upload your mm -hmm. own videos. So there's going to be still 20% of the work is going to be doing that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Once you've done that, you're done. So the gamification <laughs> is done automatically. The, the assessment creation is done automatically. We mm. all pulled in related imagery, related videos from YouTube. Ah. So, um, so we do a lot of the work that would otherwise be somewhat mm. tedious so that you can spend the 20% of your time on you know, the, the personalization and the whatever personal improvements you want to make. But at that point, it's basically ready for people to take your course. Hmm, that's really interesting. So the 20%, how are you using AI in that 20%? Because I imagine you are. So it's not simply, can you tell the co-pilot to do some editing for you or do you have to do it all by hand? So the remaining 20% currently is done by hand. Okay. Um, which is, you know, maybe as it should be, because after it's built e almost everything, it's really just a human touch. But later on this year, we're going to be providing editing tools as well. Yeah, so that's maybe what I'm wondering. Want, yeah. So maybe you want to go in and write some content of your own, but then say, hey, go ahead and improve it, make it more mm -hmm. punchy or make it more casual, for example. Mm -hmm. um, but another important thing, though, for your listeners is that while the first version of Copilot is focused on the content creation part, the next version of Copilot is also going to use generative AI to, to create really sophisticated content on the fly directly for the learners. Mm. So, you know, our overall strategy is called AI 360. Let's try and take everyone who typically make uses a learning platform and make their lives easier. Interesting. Because then I can think of, in terms of editing, that's certainly beneficial to be able to edit after you initially create using AI, I've certainly used AI tools in other platforms to do some editing of content that's created. So that I'm glad that you're adding, adding that. Um, how easy is it to change around the course? So exactly. that that's kind of a curious, I guess with the editing tool that would be you know, useful yeah. because if I'm teaching one audience and then I want to teach another audience, I would want to edit the content of the course somewhat for that audience. Exactly. So I can exactly. imagine that. It it's interesting to bring that up because um, much like yourself, I've I've written a lot of courses. I used to teach computer yeah. science in Dallas. I ran a training organization. Mm -hmm. and one of the interesting things about generative AI is when you can create 80% of a course in, say, five minutes, it mm -hmm. allows you to play around with a lot of different variants. Very, very mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. So, for example, let's just say you were going to create a course on Star Trek. And mm -hmm. using our tool, I've created courses on digital marketing, I've created courses on James Bond 007, you name it, <laughs> courses now. And if you're gonna teach a particular subject, let's just take Star Trek, there's lots of different ways to teach the same course. So you might teach it based on the aliens that they've encountered. You might uh, orient it around the technology. So there's different ways to cross cut and, and develop a course. So our best practices are now to say, build at least five versions of the same course taken from different angles, different personas. Mm -hmm. So you can give additional instructions. You can say, 
Mm -hmm. Create the course from the perspective of the captains of the enterprise, for example. Mm -hmm. So so rather than saying you have a course and then you make minor edits, you might want to say, create a course in in Japanese with this particular angle and it will do that. Mm -hmm. Then create a course in a different language with a different angle. And it's so quick and easy to do, it changes the way that you think about developing courses. Fascinating. Okay, that's really helpful. But, and you're saying everything, everything is certainly editable. So you <laughs> can go in and change and reorder and edit anything at all. It's like it's like clay in your hands. Excellent. And you are you said you'll bring on an AI that will customize it to the learner. So that was my next kind of curiosity, using AI to because I think that's the big promise of AI is that the AI can test the learner skills and then provide them with customized content, educational content based on their skills, their needs. They can go in depth into some aspects of the course. They can skip over some aspects, not skip over, but go faster over some aspects of the course that the learner knows about. And so tell me a little bit more about what you're thinking there. Yeah, so I think what we're working on is a bit even more disruptive than that. Mm. So, So the general idea is you know, we didn't know how good this AI was going to be. I mean, you know, everyone's learning about AI. It's only been around for the latest 3.5 chat GBT and onwards only been around for about about a year. And so we, when we were experimenting, when it first came out, we started just dipping our toes in, you know, let me see if it can create a question bank, like an easy thing. And it did a great job. Well, let's just say what it can do from a module course outline. Well, it did a really good job. And before we know it, it's like, wow, this can actually generate the entire course. So we kind of became a lot more ambitious in terms of what AI is possible. So we started showing this to lots of business analysts and taking it on the road and demoing it to people. They're all really amazed. And then they're like, well, you know, what can this do for the learner? So we started off, our sites were low. Well, a learner can take this course and they will get X, Y, Z benefits. And then we realized, you know what? Let's just say that I'm a learner. And I want to learn about something very specific in this moment of time. So the technology that we're working on will allow a learner to go in and say, what do you want to learn? I want to learn about James Bond's evolution from a, on the perspective of the villain, you know, anything that you want. So rather than saying to the learner, oh, here is a course that was generated by AI. Well, that's good. But we're going to generate content on demand for you right now based on what you want to learn. So, so there isn't really any concept of a traditional course at all in this hmm. situation. And what we found is the content is amazingly good. So I'll hmm. give you two scenarios. Let's say, say I'm in customer support. I'm hmm. dealing with a really difficult customer right now. And that customer is in, let's just pick a country, Brazil. I'm not saying Brazil because they're bad customers. I'm just sure. picking something like very, very specific. Yeah. So in a corporate environment, some can type in, How do I deal with a difficult customer in Brazil? And within a few seconds, it will actually generate content just for you based on exactly Hmm. what you need to know right now. And that is not possible if you're relying on the older approach of, let me find the truth about that, because you're never going to find them. Or if I'm in a K-20 environment, I want to say, build me a quick course right now just on photosynthesis. I really don't care about anything else. And what it will do, it's like your personal research assistant. Mm-hmm. It's the best content, the best videos, the best imagery, puts it all together in a few seconds right then and there. So that's not to say that the learners can't benefit from courses based on AI, because I think that's going to happen anyway. But our approach is now more ambitious. It's like, well, why not just allow anyone to learn anything on demand, mm-hmm. anytime, any place? And we, yeah. and we know it works. We've got it, you know, we've got this stuff working in our labs and I use it, you know, regularly. So that's where we think education is going for the learner side is using generative AI to create custom stuff in real time. Excellent. Now that's very helpful. And that I think is a real promise of AI doing that. So as we finish up, what is your vision of the role of the human educator? So in the previous, we were talking about earlier, obviously the human educator is creating content, editing it. So your vision of the next step is just the AI creating content. What, as we finish up, what's your vision of the human educator in the role of creating online classes? I'm really happy you asked that question. So Cypher Learning, you know, we're providing these features to our learning platform to help people not replace them. 
And that's why we call this thing co-pilot, not autopilot. And, you know, I'm an educator and I wanted to spend the majority of my time motivating and inspiring my students. Because if they're intrinsically motivated by the love of the subject, then they're going to start learning on their own pace and they're going to use AIs and private tutors and all this kind of stuff to learn stuff really quickly. But as, as you and I both know, a lot of teachers, professors, L&D people are very overworked individuals and they're trying busily to create all this content about sure. this ever-changing world. So our belief is using AI through the cycle platform will relieve them a lot of the drudgery so they can do what they can do best, which is to motivate and inspire their students. So that's what I see as being, you know, the primary role of an educator. It's still going to be meeting with, mm. you know, people in corporate or meeting with people uh, in the <laughs> universities and schools. I think that's vital. I don't think an AI is going to inspire anyone or particularly motivate anyone. Um, so I, re I really think, though, that by removing the drudgery, creating <laughs> taking away the burden of a lot of content creation will free them to motivate and inspire learners. Excellent. Well, that's a great vision of the future. Thank you for sharing your expertise, Graham. That was very helpful. Oh, it's my pleasure. And it's great to be on your show. Hmm. And thank you to the audience for checking out another episode of the Wise Decision Maker Show. Please make sure to subscribe wherever you checked out the show and leave a review. It helps others discover the show and it helps us improve the show. All right, everyone. I'll see you in the next episode of the Wise Decision Maker Show. In the meantime, the wisest and most profitable decisions to you, my friends.